Hey, I want to explain some stuff to you. I want you to understand your authority. I want to talk to you about, I got some stuff I want to share about, but about distractions in life. When we, when I was up here a while ago, it was like, I feel great today. I get this horrible headache just all of a sudden. I'm like, no, no, not right now. This is a distraction. You sit there, I start getting this headache. I said, we're not doing a distraction. I said, I'm not getting a headache right now. I'm feeling too good, having a good hair day. And I said, we're going to have a, a powerful time. And all of a sudden, I sit there and it's like, it's time to pray over all the kids' minds, to pray over the kids. I don't know what's going to happen in kids' church today, but I tell you one thing, it's going to be powerful. They're going to learn something. And, and I was just sitting there thinking like, when distractions come in, I don't care what you're doing. Stop. Have you ever had a moment to where when, when you were getting ready to, to do something and just a thought came in or, or you just you felt something? There's times the, the biggest distraction was when Jesus was at the bottom of the boat asleep. How did he sleep when everybody else was worried? Whenever we're sitting here in worship and Carmen said, hang on. Basically, let's talk about the name and the blood of Jesus. Did it not shift everything? I was trying to do offering, and the Lord's like, shift some things. I'm like, okay. Distraction stop. Mind stop. I don't have a headache anymore. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. And uh, am I, if I have an Advil, it's in my office. I ain't got time to go get it. So we're just going to stop. Distractions are going to go. And when I prayed, we pray for the peace in your mind. So what's going to happen the rest of this service? I want you, everybody here to know distractions are gone. And that's why when we were flowing earlier, I don't care if you're worried about, I mean, I do care about bills, about your job tomorrow, whatever your distractions are gone in this service because he is going to speak something. Y'all tracking with me? So if you're ever in a service and, and we're worshiping or whatever and, and your mind, it just stop. Distraction, go. Sometimes corporately we have to do that. Sometimes you'll be praying and the Lord will be like, stop. There's a lot of people hurting physically, like a physical pain. Stop. That's a distraction. Deal with it. And so I don't care what you're going through in life. You have authority over distractions. Anybody ever had like a mental block and you're trying to make a huge decision? That is a distraction that you call out. And I just declare this mental block is gone. I declare this cloud. Anybody ever have this type of stuff? You just got to take authority over it. And as a corporate group, I believe something is going to happen today. It's not just another service. That's why we're sitting there. And, and when Carmen said, I, I just kind of, this is against the flow. I'm like, yeah, I just, let's just change some stuff. And it's just, it's, it's happening. And something Miss Cheryl said a while ago was, this is a sending house, Okay. And you got to understand, you're going to be sent. Some of you will go, you will minister in some other churches on Sundays. You'll minister in other churches. Andy plays drums at another church on a Wednesday. You know, there, there is a, a bigger thing than one church. This is, we're, we're a one huge body. We go to different ministries, but we're just one big body, okay? And so God is about to shift some people's mindsets. Now, Last Sunday in transition, Autumn stood up and said, adjust your focus. And, you know, I was looking at her and I was just like, I don't want to adjust my focus, you know. And, and I just was like, adjust your focus. And that just went off in my spirit. Adjust your focus. Adjust your focus. And so this week as I was praying, the Lord said, everything you've been asking me for is right before you. You just don't see it. Stop all distractions and, and adjust your focus and go for it. Right before service, I talked to one of my intercessors, and she said, there's a lot of distractions going on in, right now in a lot of people's lives. And I'm like, well, we're going to stop those distractions because we're going to move forward. And so just understand that, that you saw two prophetic acts happen. One, when Carmen was in a flow and just stopped. In life, just stop sometimes and break the flow of life. You know, I was supposed to be doing an offering, and I, did, I think I did everything but offering. And the Lord was like, stop. Distractions are stopped and pray over the kids. Pray over kids. 
because something's going to happen. Okay, that's just from what I was just feeling today. But adjust your focus is what Autumn said last week, and it has not left my spirit. Colossians 3 and 2, it says, set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. Well, let's just talk about distractions and adjusting everything in your life according to that word right there. Now, have you ever planned your day perfectly? And by 631, it was all jacked up. It just, you're just like, man, I had a plan. I have an agenda. And, and just all of a sudden, the Lord's like, no, 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 this is going to change, okay? You're going to move in a different way. You've got to learn to flow. You're going to see in, in the church of America, you're going to see some uh, people adjusting their focus back to the cross, back to the name of Jesus, back to the power of the blood. You're going to see some things change. You're going to see some marriages restored. You're going to see some families restored because we're going to adjust our focus according to the word. So set your mind on things above and not on the things of this earth. Amen. Okay, um, uh, go along with that in, in Proverbs 4.25. Set your gaze on the path before you. With fixed purpose, look straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Do y'all know in East Texas, the pollen demon, I think, is stronger than any place in the world. That is the biggest. And don't have a black vehicle, okay, when that demonic spirit appears. My black truck is yellow like two months out of the year. I'm like, what in the world? And so distractions, when you get a disturbing phone call, distractions, when you get a bad doctor's report, distractions, stop what you're doing, rebuke that distraction, adjust your focus, look upwardly, your destiny. I told this one guy one time, I said, buddy, your destiny does not take a day off. You have so many distractions. And he would tell me what was distracting and stuff. And the thing about young people, we prayed for the kids. And I almost went in and prayed for, for the youth. I'm going to do that right now. And so, Lord, I just declare over all of the youth that are here, part of our church, I just declare that distractions are gone out of their life, that they will do exactly what Proverbs 4.25 is, set their gaze on the path before them, God, and they will go hard after you all the days of their life. Amen. And so this is a season that when you adjust your focus, things are about to shift, okay? Uh, Matthew 6.24, how can we worship two gods at the same time? You, you will have uh, to hate one and love the other. Or, you know, you got to be devoted to one and, and not the other. You can't worship the true God while enslaved, you know, to the God or money or whatever people idolize in, in life. I'm, I'm telling you, this is a season distractions are going to die. I, you know, and a lot of times people get so bogged down and bound down in something in their mind. But we have to understand how to operate with the Lord with a free mind no matter what is going on in our life, because I have never in my life seen a more exciting time in America. It seems like the church is the underdog for a lot of things in America, but I'm telling you, some things are going to shift. We're going to see the power of God in America. We're going to see revival and awakening and outpouring. We're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And whatever tries to distract you, just like this scripture said, you know, ignore life's distractions and go for it. Just absolutely go for it. As I was praying this week, I heard the word recalibration. It means to correct or adjust the setting of a system or thinking process. In your life, I want you to have a recalibration in your mind, in your thinking process towards the Lord. And this is what you believe, what the Word says, okay? I don't, whatever the Word says, that's what we believe. It, if it's in the Word, it's going to happen. And, and it's really that basic. It's really that simple. And you know the sound of your Father's voice. When He gives you a prophetic word, believe it. Man, the, the greatest things I've ever heard, everybody told me I was wrong. There's no way that can happen. That's right, it can't happen to you, but it can happen. People have told me prophetic words, and I look at them, I'm like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard, but I'm not God. And I said, okay, I believe in you. And then they do it. I'm like, how in the world? How in the world? But that's how he does things. So you have to recalibrate your mind. And what happens is, let's say you're focused and you're moving forward. 
and then a life's distraction comes in, you got to recalibrate and move yourself back into proper alignment. Something else happens, a distraction comes in. Recalibrate your life. You ever had a, a doctor's report that didn't sit well with you? It knocks you way out. Health and finances. You ever got a bill that you were like, I didn't even know I owed this. That knocks you like, <laughs> I keep going. And then, no, no, get back from that distraction and lock in. And the, a lot of times, I was talking with my intercessors this morning, and, and she was just like, there's great things going to happen in your service today, but watch out. The enemy brings distractions on your mind. Have you ever got up in the morning and you were ready to have your quiet time, and it's just like distractions? Don't worry about it. Ignore life's distractions and move forward. This is a moving forward season. Um, Joel 2.25, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locusts, the young locusts, the, the other locusts, and every other swarming locust. Basically, anything that has stolen anything from you in life, get ready. It is payback season. And anything that the devil has stolen... He's not repaying. Listen, the devil's not going to repay you. I don't want nothing from that joker. God's going to repay you. If it was a prophetic word, people say, oh, the devil's going to give back. I don't want nothing he's touched. I want new. I want fresh, and I want exciting. I want everything that God has for me. Because if the devil stole something, he can keep it. Because God's going to bring it and bring it more abundantly. You lost some friends, wait till you see your new friends. You, you lost a job, wait till you see your new job. I don't care what you've lost, God's got better. And it's going to be better. And you got to believe it. I've had people that got a little healing. I didn't know there was a little healing. It's just healing. But I got a little healing one time, but this is a big problem. Well, the enemy tried to steal your health. No, you're about to get a God-sized healing, and it's going to change. And you are going to be delivered because distractions will bother you no more. Just deal with those things. I'm telling you, when something frustrates me, I go to war against that thing. And I'm going to win because greater is he that's in me than he that is in this world. I'm telling you, friends, whatever has tried to rob your mind and rob your peace, let it go. And get ready for what God has for you. Y'all tracking with me today? All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has came. The old is gone away and the new is here. You know, what, what I love about uh, a ministry like ours is it's okay if you just stop and pray. And so I just even feel like today is a day of a shift in what we're supposed to do in this ministry. That today is a day that there is a shift in what we're supposed to do. And I'm just going to let you know, if you're in this church, you're going to be some type of minister. It may be to the mailman, the UPS man, because all y'all get in UPS boxes and FedEx boxes every day. And I don't care what you do. I don't care the person beside you. You're going to be a minister. You're going to be able to discern what the, the, the coworker you have that's always having problems. You're going to discern and prophesy over their life in a loving, kind way. The officers in here, if you arrest somebody, you're going to prophesy life to them. They need it. Just every person, the people in school, the meanest people that you go to school with, you're going to prophesy life to them. Recalibration from the Lord is coming to so many. Now, um, I'm not going to get through with all this, but so the next thing I heard strongly during prayer this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. was fresh wind. Fresh wind is about to hit people. And here's the cool thing. The Lord said there's about to be a fresh wind at our church, which is great. I'm excited about that. But then the Lord also made me to tell people there's going to be a fresh wind in your day-to-day, everyday life. Fresh wind just hitting you. Fresh wind moving. Fresh wind doing things. This is it. John 3 and 8. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but do not know where it comes from and where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. It's like you don't know some, you do have a plan, you know what you're doing in life, but when the Holy Spirit, the wind blows you, have you ever felt compelled just to walk up to a stranger and just speak life over them, be kind to them? Um, if you see them, you can tell their countenances down to pray for them. Man, maybe you're the one that brings life to their distraction. You just come in there and speak into it. You just speak over them. 
Where the wind blows, the joy returns. Wherever the wind blows, and when the wind blows, the joy returns. I'm just going to tell you, some of you are about to get the wind of the Holy Spirit. One of my greatest moments was I was sitting right here by myself. I don't know why. I just like pitch dark. And I was in the pitch dark in the middle of the day. And I was just sitting here just praying, didn't have any music playing or nothing. And the wind came on. Now, I do know that there's a vent. If you're ever preaching here and you get hot, stand right here. Okay, <laughs> right here. And, uh, and so I said, well, is the air on? And I, I came in, there's no air on. And I sat back down, I started praying, I started walking around, the wind came in here again. I said, whoo. And I look around, I'm like, there's no doors open. I'm like, well, this is kind of getting crazy. And I can't walk around the building. No matter where I went, I'd sit there and pray for it, and the wind just kept blowing. The wind of God. Let me tell you about Big Nanny. So I started preaching, I was arrogant. I thought I knew something, but I didn't. And, and I was sitting there helping Big Nanny. I was about 20 years old, was in her backyard, and she said, oh, little JoJo, it sure is hot out here. Ask Holy Spirit to blow. And I said, what? She said, ask the Holy Spirit. You go to one of those wild churches and ask the Holy Spirit to blow. And I said, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, Big Nanny. She said, let me teach you something, boy. Holy Spirit, would you just blow right now and give us a breeze? And I thought just the wind was like, Whoo. she said, okay, okay, Holy Spirit, that's enough, thank you. And the wind stopped. She said, oh, you have little faith. And I was like, I've never seen anybody do something like that. And she said, look, she said, you, you, you got to operate in the things that you're reading about. I was like, big nanny, that was some crazy stuff right there. And then you got to understand what you walk in. You have authority. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who have hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Some people need some hope restored today. You're going to renew your strength. And it says, they will soar on wings like eagles, and they will run and not grow weary. And I love when it says, and they will walk and not be faint. I'm telling you, today, some of you are going to renew your strength. You will not be weary. You're not going to be faint because there is a fresh wind. Distractions are going to leave your life today. You're going to adjust your focus. You're going to have a recalibration. You're going to have a fresh wind. And things are going to start going in the right direction. Things are about to start moving. Um, I, I love in Acts 2, 2 through 4. Okay. And all at once. How many of y'all need it all at once? All at once. They just sitting there. They just sitting there. And all at once. A sound from heaven like a powerful wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. All at once, just things changed. Things shifted. The wind blew. Some of you are about to enter into a, just the wind's just about to blow. I don't care what it is in your life. It's just something in your life. You're going to sit there. And now, one of my greatest God moments I ever have, I hate yard work, and I'm horrible at it. But... When I was a kid, I was just, just, and I didn't know the Lord really. I was just raking, and I was just frustrated, and it was taking forever. My parents, for some crazy reason, bought a huge place. And, and I was just like, God, I hate raking. I just wish that just the wind would blow. The wind started blowing in my favor. I got so excited. My parents thought I did a good job. I didn't do nothing. It's the wind started blowing all of those and I was just like, man, this is great. The wind just blew in my favor. And I didn't understand what was happening. But you know, in life, you're about to have the wind hit you. You're about to have an aha moment um, where it just, things make sense. Things just start happening. It just happens in life. Have you ever had one of those moments? They're going to happen. All of a sudden, the sound of wind. Can you hear some wind blowing in your life? It's just going to be a moment when things are about to fall into place. Distractions die and you move forward. I was telling my intercessors today, I was on the phone with them. I was like, you know, I feel like Nehemiah. I have a tool and I'm building in one hand, but I got a sword of warfare in my other. I just want to have some tools that I can build with in both hands so I can build what I'm supposed to build. And then my intercessors were like, you're going to see distractions go away. You're going to see things stop. 
And it is a lot of our distractions are in our minds. When we get a renewed mind, that's, that's my second to, well, I'm going to get to this other point, then I'm going to come to the minds. But the, the Lord spoke this to me this week. You're about to enter into seasons of encounters. Okay, when you hear from the Lord, here's one thing I want you to always look for. Did he say singular or did he say plural? And so I was like, did, did you say encounters, plural? Seasons of encounters. And here's the thing. If this is your best encounter you have all week, you've missed it. You've missed it. And man, our, our services don't compare to when me and Jesus, we're just in the sanctuary praying. Because it's like I have an audience. And when, and when I feel the presence, it's just for him and I. And I'm like, God, do you mean you would bring your presence in here in a strong way just for me? Like, just for me. And so it's going to be a seasons of encounters. Um, I don't have any of these on the, the screen because I didn't think I was going to get into all this, but I am. In Exodus, you know when Moses was watching the, the, the flock for his father-in-law, and he saw the angel of the Lord appear as a bush burning, this is what I, I like. As he got ready to walk towards the bush, this is what he heard. Do not draw near to this place. First, take your sandals off. Before he could encounter the fresh wind, he had to adjust his mindset for the new encounter. Because he couldn't take the past season into the new season. He couldn't take the distraction in. Or when he got the new, the distraction would take him off. He had to have a fresh mind, no sandals on. Something had to shift. You have to have a shift in your life to get what is coming next. And you know what's coming next? It is a fresh encounter from God. It is a fresh wind of God. And you know the most irresistible thing about people is the anointing of God that is on your life. And so even from what Malachi what was sharing today, you have to know who you are and you know who you are. You are a son or a daughter of the most high God. No, we ain't, ain't no all those other genders. You are a son or a daughter of the most high God. You one of the two. Okay. And if you're not, you're confused. So the thing is, you have to know who you are. And then when, when you come up, it's like I am a son or a daughter. I am ready to do the father's business. And here's what happens. Every time you get ready to do something, the enemy will, will rear up his head, chop it off. What chops it off? A sword. What kind of sword? The Bible. Quote the word over it. You're going to see things start to happen. You're going to move forward. And so I love this. Do not draw near to this place. Why not? Because you ain't ready. Get those dirty shoes off before you walk in this house. And so um, you got, I, had, I had a contractor walked in with dirty boots on the other day. Sorry. I need deliverance from that. But when you step in, something's got to be different. So like this, if someone calls me and says, Joe, I have a prophetic word for you. I'm like, Lord, prepare my heart to walk into this new word. I can't walk in where I'm at. I need to get ready to walk in. Are y'all tracking with me? Every day, if we get before the Lord, say, God, I do this early in the morning every day. I say, Lord, remove strongholds, wrong mindsets, distractions, old good things that will affect my new God things Take those away because I want a fresh encounter. I don't want to just go off of last season's prophetic word. I need a new word for, for myself, for our, our family, for our ministry, for our businesses. I need a fresh word. And so this morning I was here early seeking a word that I needed from the Lord. And you know what? I said, God, I'll do whatever. He said, I'm going to require more of you in this next season. I'm like, I figured you were going to say that. And he said, this is what I need you to do. And he started showing me things. But you know what I did? I took my sandals off. I drew near to the Lord. I stepped into the new place that he has for me. And that's what we're going to do. This is from the Lord. Prophetic word. You're going to have seasons of encounters. You know why? Why? Because you're going to have a sound mind. And you know, the best scripture on that is 2 Timothy 1.7. And understand this. Do you know where this came from? The founding fathers of the church, and they were living in perilous times, horrible times, warfare times. Do you not think we're in warfare in America? We're, we're, you know, I just believe, I believe 
that the church should lead, that the church should be the people, the people, the, the government people, the people in, in all spheres of just influence should come in and say, what are the prophets saying? What are the apostles saying? You know, but the church has lost a lot of respect, but it's regaining. How's it going to regain Influenced by Acts, the book of Acts. We're going to experience a fresh wind. I don't care what people say. When someone walks out of a wheelchair, when someone prophesies what you did three weeks ago on Thursday at 4.30, you're going to have someone's attention when they prophesy. God is raising up apostles and prophets. God is raising up people to be powerful voices, new business owners, for people to start thriving because they're going to have something to say. So 2 Timothy was written during hard times, perilous times. Uh, a nation w- w- was just in, in an uproar. But this, this is what Paul wrote. He said, Timothy, stay strong, man. Stay strong during all the distractions around you. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power, Holy Ghost power, love, and a sound mind. What is a sound mind? Free from distractions. I don't care what's going on around me. I'm focused on the Lord. I'm focused on God and I'm going to move forward. And this is the reason we need to teach our kids, grandkids, that that when you're going through hard times, you're going to, I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but you're going to focus on the Lord and he's going to get you through and your sound mind will give you peace as the wind of God pushes you through it's like the a sound mind is like a sail then the wind hits it it's going to push you forward have you ever seen people thriving in life and somebody still in survival mode around them why it's their mindset and people call me and oh my goodness joe you're not going to believe what's going on in my life and and i said man that that's that's bad that's real bad and uh, i pray and you know what everybody has something going on in their life right now it seems If you're advancing for the kingdom of God, it's it's just the world's changing, but we're going to reshape it in the church world. So uh, 1 Peter 1.13, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. You ever seen somebody gets in a fighting position? They don't put their feet like this and their hands down. No, they square up, they get balanced, they put their hands up, you know, and this is what it's saying. You need to strengthen your mind for what's going forward. And it says, be sober. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus. When your mind is strong and you're sober-minded and your hope and faith is built up, there is nothing this world can throw at you that will knock you off because you are positioned. You are in a fighting stance. Your mind is girded up. It is strong. It's ready for battle. Bring it on, enemy. We're going to conquer some strongholds today. We're going to slay some distractions and we're going to do everything that, that everybody around us and the enemy said we couldn't do. Listen. Listen, if the enemy says you can't do it, that's just motivation right there to do it. If someone you know says you can't have that, you just be kind, but show them. You got the Holy Ghost. Whatever the Holy Spirit says, you are going to do. Amen? So remember this. Adjust your focus. Recalibrate your mind. Get rid of distractions. A fresh wind. What if the fresh wind was waiting on you to get rid of distractions in your life? And I don't know what that distraction is for you. It's it's different for for everybody. A lot of people, it's just a wandering mind. Focus on the word. Seasons of encounters. Ooh, I just said seasons of encouragement by mistake. Was it a mistake? I don't know. It may have been, but what about a sound mind? We all need a sound mind. Everybody here needs a sound mind. There, there, There is, I was talking to someone the other day, and they were like just, excited about life and I said after we're talking I said hey aren't you going through this this and this they're like yeah yeah I am man it's all good God's got it I'm like "Ooh, I might be a little nervous they're not nervous at all because God's got them 100% that's how we all need to be so you heard a lot today you heard a lot about in worship man it was great what Malachi shared was great what Cheryl shared was great what if in 150, 200 years, people talk about roar? <laughs> I mean, the Lord's going to come back before them, but who knows? He may be Terry longer than we think. You know, I just want to be a place where people can come and experience the presence of God, the presence and the power of God. And people can walk in and get a prophetic word straight from the Lord. Amen. All right, we're going to pray.
If you need prayer for anything, come up. Somebody's going to pray over you. And I just always encourage people to you know, stay where you're at if you need to and just, just receive from the Lord. Just receive a word from God. So, Lord, I thank you for every person that is here. I just speak life over every person, Lord. And, Lord, I just, I just pray... I just pray strongly over people's minds. Strong over people's minds. In Jesus' name. Their minds are going to be strong. And Lord, I pray that when people leave today, that the distractions that they left to come here, we're not going to follow them. They're not going to have the distractions. I just speak over everybody's life, family, workplace. Distractions are going to die down. They're going to have a strong mind, a sober mind. Fresh encounters are coming. Seasons of encounters and empowerment. It's going to be strong empowerment this season from the Lord. And a fresh wind of the Lord is about to hit you. So, Lord, I speak life and blessing over every person here. In your mighty name, Lord. Amen.